And it's code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in this well, Welcome back to my state of tutorial video series. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about one of the gotchas in Stata, something that comes to bite you periodically and confuses people who are new to Stata. When, when I looked at gotchas, there's really two of them that uh, come up pretty frequently. One is missing values, and we've addressed that in a separate video. This video is going to look at data precision. The precision of your data come into play in two kinds of circumstances. The first is when we have uh, decimal values, and the other is when we have arbitrarily large values in our variables. And we often get mismatches in the number we think we're trying to store and the storage format. I'm going to give you a couple of clues here of places to look for more information on this. In the command window, if you type help precision, you'll get a long explanation of how Stata deals with precision. It'll go through some of the examples very similar to what I'm going through in this tutorial. And it'll be a much more extended discussion of the problem. And as a bonus, near the end, it'll tell you why you don't get the same kinds of problems in, in a program like Excel and you do in Stata, and then how to deal with them. So that's definitely a good place to start. Let's go ahead and uh, look at some data. I'm going to create a little data set here, and that's going to be in lines 1 through 12. I'll create a data set, describe it, and then list out the cases. Notice that in my input statement, I'm creating three variables, x, y, and z. x will be defined as a byte data storage type. y will be defined as a default data type, which in Stata is floating point. And z will be a double precision variable. My numbers are identical in each of my rows. So my first record is all ones, x, y, and z are all ones. And the, the second record, everybody's two and so forth. The one, pro the one issue here I'm introducing the, to show the problem is in line 9, where x, y, and z will be set equal to 7.3. Let's go ahead and run this block of code. And the way I like to do this in my video series is I highlight the block, and then I move my cursor up here to this button, which is, allows me to execute the selection of this do file, and see what we get. So I've cleared the data set. There's my input statement and it uh, fires back my data at me and then down here I have my describe so we can see now that X is read in as a byte variable it has a display format of 8.0 G Y is read in as a floating point storage type and it has a display format of 9.0 G and, and Z is, fled in as, is read in as a double precision variable when I list these values out we can notice a couple of interesting things Look at the x variable, the column labeled x. We know that record number 7 should be 7.3, but because I declared the storage type to be byte, you can't store decimal values in a byte variable. So Stata took the integer portion of that and got rid of the 0.3. Y and Z appear to have stored the 7.3 faithfully, and so we think we're in good standing, but it turns out in, in record number 7, the value of 7.3 for y and the value of 7.3 for z are actually not equal to each other because of the differences in the data precision. Let's go back to the do file and do some listing of values here. Let's check for some equalities. So in line 15, I'm going to list out cases, list out all the records, where x, the variable x, is equal to 7.3. Notice the use of the double equal signs to test for inequality. You can see that this results in no cases being listed, and that's sensible because the 7.3 I attempted to store as a byte was stored as an integer, and I lost the fractional part of that. So this is probably fixed if we look at y. So now let's list out all of the cases if y is equal to 7.3. Here's the gotcha. Notice that it didn't produce any cases. I'm looking at my value of y for case number 7. It says 7.3. I'm asking it to list it out, but it doesn't find any cases. So here's an example where, as a new user to Stata, you might say to yourself, why isn't 7.3 equal to 7.3? 
Well, let's go ahead and try this again with our z variable. We're going to list if z is equal to 7.3. This one works. The only difference between y and z is the data storage type. And the difference between storing data in the default state of format of floating point and double precision is the number of decimal places stored. So 7.3 is stored in, in the variable y to approximately 24 decimal places. And in the variable z, our precision is to 54 places. Now, the additional complication here is that fractional values in the decimal system, so a number like 0.3 or 1 divided by 3, makes sense to us in base 10. But the computer stores everything in binary. And there's no binary, there's no finite binary representation of a value like 1 third or 7.3. That fractional value can't be stored in binary. The computer thinks in binary or stores everything in binary. So this lack of precision then, whether we're precise to 24 or 53 decimal places, comes back to bite us. There's a solution to this. Um, there's more than one. One solution, and the one I don't actually recommend, is to when you create all of your variables and you input variables, store everything in the double precision. The trouble with this is it's a very inefficient storage format, and if you have values like um, uh, it's often very typical that you might, like in survey data, you might have values that outcomes that range from 1 to 5. And you can store those in one byte of storage space as a byte variable, but as a double precision variable, each one will take 8 bytes of storage. And so your, your storage requirements grow quite a bit if you store everything as double precision. But if you only work in small data sets, this may never bother you, and you could go ahead and set the default input to be double precision and never have a problem. The method that I use, and the one recommended by Stata, is that whenever I need to make a comparison, I take my variables that are floats, and I compare it to other floats. So let's look at line 18 in, this, uh, in my computer program. Line 18 says list out, list all the cases, if y remember y is stored as a float, is equal to, and I'm using a function here, the float function, I'm taking the, I'm taking the value 7.3, which Stata will try to evaluate as a double precision number, and I'm demoting it to a floating point number. When I do this, I should be able to see that, in fact, 7.3 equals 7.3. Now, just to make this case a little stronger, I'm going to display for you down below in lines 20 through 24 of my program, I'm going to display the floating point representation of the number 7.3 and the double precision uh, representation of the number 7.3. And I'm going to show you approximately um, 16 decimal places. And we'll see these one above the other to make them easy to look at. So there you go. When you take the number 7.3, because there's no finite representation of that number in binary, and you store it in floating point storage variables, it comes out to be 7.3000001907 and so forth. When you store that exact same number as a double precision number, it comes out to be 7.29999 and it repeats. So here's why we run into this kind of odd situation where on the surface 7.3 doesn't equal 7.3. Again, the solutions, store your variables as double precision variables. Not something I recommend, but certainly possible to do. The other, make certain anytime you're doing comparisons that you're comparing floating point to floating point or double precision to double precision. Let's go back to our program and look at one other gotcha that's related to precision. I'm going to read in a new data set. I've put in some very large numbers here. I'm going to read in three new variables, ID1, ID2, and ID3. ID1 is going to be stored in the default floating point format. ID2 is going to be stored in a long format. I could have stored it as a double, and that would have worked as well. ID3 is going to be read in as a string variable. Obviously, on the screen, each one of these ID numbers, ID1, ID2, and ID3, are identical to each other. Let's go ahead and read these in, add a format and list out the values. So let's look at ID1. ID1 
the first number, the first record ends in 6792, the second record ends in 6792, the third record ends in 6792, and so forth. Why aren't we able to see these ID numbers? Well, I've taken nine digits of information and I've attempted to stuff them into a data storage format that can only handle up to seven digits. And that difference has led Stata to basically demote these variables and take part of the answer and put it into ID1. So here's another example of where precision can come to bite. If you attempt to store a very large number at the wrong, in the wrong data storage type, so you don't have enough uh, precision to store your data, Stata will do what it, can, what it can, but it will produce the wrong values. ID2, on the other hand, is still a number. I've just said put it into long format, into a long data storage type. And here you can see Stata correctly gets each ID number. So this is one solution. I could have stored it also as a binary and that would have provided enough precision to maintain these numbers. But sometimes your ID numbers get so large and they're arbitrarily large that in fact you can't even store them as a number in any uh, statistical application. Really what I suggest if your ID numbers are unique values and you're never going to do any statistical analysis on them anyways, why store them as a number at all? Go ahead and store them as a string variable. So ID3 is the string representation of those numbers. And just because they're numbers doesn't mean we can't treat them as if they were the same as letters. And again to confirm this, I'm just going to go ahead and in my command window type in the browse command so we can look at the data as if it's a spreadsheet. Now I'm up here in ID1 for record 1 and you can see I've got the value 1.235 times 10 to the 8th power so it's giving me the scientific notation. If I slide over a column you can see I actually have the correct representation of that number and if I go one more column it looks like the numbers in there but in fact I know that this is a string. And how do I know that? because whenever you're in the data browser or editor any of your variables that are colored red the implication is that that's a string variable anything that's black is a numeric variable I could confirm this other ways as well for example going down to my command window and typing in describe so we can see that I've got floating point long and string I encourage you to go to the, the manual and look up help data types, all one word data types. And that will give you all the different storage types. And I'm displaying a graphic on the screen here that's taken right out of the Stata manual. The sooner you come to terms with the issue of precision, the better off you're going to be. And it will explain why you don't always get the results you think you're going to get. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. And it's code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happened.